you know, given given that as as I said, my my ambition was always to be a, a band guy as right. opposed to a, a side man, as opposed to just being a hired hand playing somebody. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I I was always interested in the writing process, and I uh, had relatively little opportunity to get involved in that. There was a group. Um, in the, uh, you know, I mentioned uh, we were talking a little earlier about the drummer Steve Holly. Yes. And, um, no, you know, Steve's, uh, Steve and, and, and my relationship goes back to uh, 1983 after I did uh, uh, G's record and Brian's record and toured with Garland. And uh, the, two, the two of us um, ended up. Uh, meeting and forming a band with a guy named Ian McDonald, another English expat who was a founding member with, of King Crimson and then later foreigner. And I always personally, as a side note, had trouble reconciling those two. How is somebody who's a founding member of King Crimson also a founding member of foreigner? It never really seemed to make a lot of sense to me. But I guess talent is talent. And, and so uh, that's where Steve and I first met. We didn't know each other from England. We knew each other... Uh, from that point, and um, so we we had this band with Ian, and it and it never really quite got off the ground. And before we really had a chance to get any further with it, Tommy Shaw from Sticks came along. He was now on hiatus from Sticks, and he was uh, auditioning uh, rhythm sections for his thing. And Steve and I ended up being the guys, and we ended up staying with him for about three years. Right. After that, um, and sort of. Uh, Concurrent, even before that, I had done a bunch of demos with a, a singer-songwriter by the name of Jules Shear. Right. Uh, and um, I did a, a bunch of demos that actually ended up coming out on a record that he had put out, a record called Demoitis, which was a record of his, right. his demos. And I'm, I'm on a lot of that, and Steve is on some of that as well. And um, after uh, Tommy's thing ended, I got a call from Jules that he was interested in putting a band together. And he had Elliot Easton from The Cars on guitar, okay. and he needed a bass player and drummer, and he wanted me to come in and, and join it or you know, try it out or whatever. And uh, who, could I, who would I like to bring in on drums? And I said, come on, it's got to be Steve. <laughs> so that became Reckless Sleepers. Okay. And we recorded one album for IRS. The initial writing process was um, a lot of the, uh, an, uh, a fair amount of the songs would would come from bass lines that I would bring in, mm -hmm. ideas that I had had germinating and really never found a home for. And I would come in and I would play these bass lines, and then Steve would play some wacky drum groove with it, and Jules would start singing over the top. And that became sort of the writing process. Mm -hmm. And uh, we wrote, uh, you know, most of a, of a record that way, and then added Jimmy Vivino on guitar, okay. who, you know, became Conan's guy, guy but right, obviously has right. had his, yeah. his own career. And so that was the band. It was, it was Jimmy and Steve and myself and Jules. And um, we made one record uh, with a guy named Scott Litt, who was best known for producing R.E.M. Okay. and has also oh, yeah. you okay. know, done a bunch of other stuff. But I would say if I had to pick a record that I personally am most proud of, that would have to be it. I think that there are other records that I've played on that I'm really proud of my performance. Uh, Such as? Well, you know, the Brian Adams record that I did, to me, still to this day, sounds so good. Mm. Which one were you? It was called You Want It, You Got It. And it was really the, f the, the, it was the first record that he did uh, with Clear Mountain right. once he had come to New York. He had actually done a, you know, a lot of people think it's his first record. He had actually done a record before he left Vancouver. Okay that had had uh, a song on it that I think had cracked maybe the Canadian charts, but it never really was, you know, and he didn't really have a great band with him at that point. This was really the first record that had uh, a really strong band and, and had the sound that would end up being his sound. It was uh, Mickey on drums and, and Tommy Mandel uh, on keys and I was the bass player and, and Brian played the basics and then they had a, a lead guitar player come in uh, forgive me I actually don't remember his name offhand but I actually never met him he came in and he recorded some solos afterwards but um, it had a song on it called Lonely Nights that became his first sort of semi semi hit